Buddhism is one of the most ancient belief system practiced by over 350 million people in the world. So basically Buddhism can be a philosophy and a religion because it teaches you a way of life. The most significant date on the Buddhist calendar, familiar even to non-Buddhists, is the thrice sacred day of Vesak. On that day, Buddhists across the world will pay homage to an Indian prince who forsook the pleasures of a royal household to bring peace and happiness to mankind over 2,000 500 years ago. Wisak is Buddhism's holiest day. Wisak Day or also known as the Tri-Sacred Day, holds special significance for the millions of Buddhists who comprise a fifth of the world's total population. In thousands of temples across the world, from Tokyo in the east to San Francisco in the west, Buddhists will pay homage to Lord Buddha. The goal of a Buddhist is to become a Buddha. The goal of a Buddhist is to eliminate suffering. The complete elimination of suffering from our mind is possible, is definitely possible. That elimination of suffering from our mind, when we reach that state, it is called nirvana, in the general sense of the word. The day Buddha became enlightened or reached nirvana is a day celebrated by Buddhists all over the world is because that's what we wish to achieve. So we are celebrating our goals. Millions of Buddhists celebrate Wisak in India, China, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, and Indonesia. While the manner in which Wisak is celebrated varies around the world, the goal is similar, to recall Buddha's teachings and affirm an intention to follow them. is that we must try our best not to do evil things. We must try our best to do good things. The, we must cultivate ourselves. And this is the, all the Buddha's teaching. Wisak expresses Buddhism's core beliefs in a variety of ways. The celebration centers on the triple gem of the Buddha, the Dharma or Buddha's teaching, and the Sangha or spiritual community. The first jewel is the Buddha, and Lord Buddha's importance is expressed through symbolic offerings to images of the Buddha and the celebration of his life and teachings. Vesak Day is celebrated for Buddhists around the world is to connect with our goal, connect with the purpose of practicing Buddhism, connect with the very person who showed us our potential the Buddha. 
On the Vesak Day, the Buddhist community around the world commemorates the important events that took place in the life of Lord Buddha. First comes the birth of Siddhartha Gautama, which took place under the arbor of sat trees, where Queen Mahamaya gave birth to him. The second event was Siddhartha Gautama's supreme attainment as the Buddha, the enlightened one under the Bodhi tree. The third event was Lord Buddha's passing away, also known as Mahaparinibbana, or the attainment of ultimate peace and bliss over 2,500 years ago at Kush Nagar. Vesak Day is a celebration of Lord Buddha's enlightenment, mainly along with his birth and his death. The second jewel, the Dharma or teachings, are also expressed in Vesak and influence the lives of Buddhists who choose to observe them even more so during this time. Teachings of compassion and generosity and the beliefs in karmic rebirth influence Buddhists to engage in acts of dana or generosity. If you really can learn the uh, uh, Buddha's teaching and understand Buddha's teaching, it's definitely a benefit for people's life. So it is not only for this life, as well as hereafter. Aspects of the Dharma relating to the birth, enlightenment, and Parinirvana of the Buddha include the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths are the principles that the Buddhists should bear in mind on the day of Vesak because it is the day upon which the Buddha realized those truths. The Four Noble Truths constitute the highest truth in that they do not change and are true for each and every one of us. They are suffering, the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and the way to the cessation of suffering. Tang 信解行就是要去真正去做去修行去行动去修行去修行去行动去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修行去修
啊，就是人人更够更能够安乐，人人更更的和谐。所以净化社会是一个果，是要我们要看到一个成果。但是主要呢，佛教就讲点点名的一点，如果人心不净化，社会都没办法净化。所以我们佛教实际上强调一个一个教育，就净化社会，首先要净化人心，所以人心净化，社会才能够净化。So therefore, Vesak Day is a celebration, connection, and spiritual remembrance of what we wish to achieve. That is Vesak Day. The significance of Vesak lies with the Buddha and his universal peace message to mankind. It was through the Buddha's way of virtuous living and insightful practice that he developed the true understanding to gain liberation from suffering. Buddhism, as you know, is one of the oldest. Religions in the world. It's over 2,500 years old, and the founder, the teacher, and the beginner, as you can call it, is Buddha Shakyamuni, who was a North Indian prince, and he is a historical figure. Also, he's not something that is legendary, but it's a historical figure. And um, Lord Buddha looked into the nature of life, existence, family. People, and he had decided that many things we do in our lives bring us a lot of grief, unhappiness, and sadness, and we keep doing the same things unknowingly, bringing more grief and more sadness and more unhappiness. And in his great compassion, he noticed that and he saw that, and he taught methods. And ways to deal with how we live our lives, how we view our environment, and how we react to our environment. And when we change that reaction to our environment, we change the end result. When we change the end result, we create less grief. The Buddha was born a prince of the Sakya clan. As the future ruler of the Sakya clan, Prince Siddhartha lived a luxurious life of comfort and pleasure in the palace. However, in search of the great way of liberation, to save all sentient beings from the cycle of birth and death, Siddhartha left the palace on a white horse. Came to a forest at the foot of the snowy mountains, and there he practiced asceticism for six long years. Siddhartha endured every form of ascetic practices until he finally realized that the middle path was the answer. Cultivation is like playing a musical string instrument. The string will snap. If it is too tight, or not make any sound. If it is too loose, indulgence in sensual pleasure or extreme penance are attachments. Be at peace with the middle path for achieving the liberation of body and mind. Siddhartha sat in cultivation beneath the Bodhi tree. Alone, he confronted the tortuous assailants from Mara's evil home. The earth is my witness.
At that instant, Siddhartha was in complete tranquility and perfect emptiness. He was enlightened and he became the Buddha. Strange indeed, all sentient beings exist with a Buddha nature, but it is suppressed by vexation and delusion. I wish to be humble. I am not enslaved by fame and wealth. I have come to spread the Dharma, to free all sentient beings from the sea of samsara. Your Majesty, as a king, you should love your people as your own children. A king should not oppress the people. Life should be valued equally as nothing is more honorable than life itself. We should not look down upon ourselves. One does not become distinguished by one's birth, but by one's behavior. You clear the dirt from people's homes. I clear the dirt from people's hearts. Hence, you and I are the same. Please rise. The goal of a Buddhist is to gain that enlightenment so that we don't create suffering for ourselves and others and then share that with others. The goal of Buddhism is removal of suffering for others first and then oneself. So therefore, respect of animals, respect of people, of culture, of other um, ways of doing things is very, very important in Buddhism. Respect of other human beings is extremely important in Buddhism. Since enlightenment, I've shown you the Noble Eightfold Path. Right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. I have never wearied of teaching the Dharma. The Buddha was born in a palace. While still in his youth, he became a monk. He attained enlightenment under a Bodhi tree. At the age of 80, between a pair of Sala trees, the Buddha entered Nirvana. I have delivered all the sentient beings I could and have planted the seeds of deliverance for those who have yet to be delivered. Let the precepts be your teacher and my teachings your guide, and I will be with you forever. As Buddhism spread from India to all parts of the world, the teachings were readily assimilated with the cultures of the people who accepted the teachings. The practice of Buddhism was adapted in many ways to suit the nature of the various cultures that accepted it. As a result of this, Wisak is celebrated in many different ways all over the world. But in essence, 
many practices have become universal. Buddhist celebration in the United States is not different from a Buddhist celebration here. The practice of sharing or giving or letting go is one part of the practice. The second part of the practice is uh, training yourself to be a nicer person. For this, uh, what you do is you observe certain precepts. So the idea of precept is uh, resolution. Uh, when you take a resolution and you follow it, you become better according to the resolution. For example, I try my best not to hurt other beings. I try my best not to take anything that is not given to me, that's stealing. I try my best not to satisfy my sexual desire in a way that somebody else get hurt somewhere. I try my best not to lie to any other being, person, and mislead them and put them in suffering. I try my best not to get uh, intoxicated by taking drugs or alcohol in a way that I hurt myself and hurt somebody else. So those are the basic five precepts of uh, all Buddhists. On Wizard Day, all Buddhists are expected to reaffirm their faith in the Dhamma and to lead a noble religious life. It is a day for meditation and for radiating loving-kindness. One week before Wisak, devotees conduct a ritual known as Three Steps, One Bow. In this ceremony, devotees line up before sunrise to meditatively circumambulate the perimeter of the temple, bowing once every three steps, while chanting mantras on the name of the Buddha in praise of him. The significance of this practice helps to purify the mind, humble the ego, and lessen obstacles along the spiritual path. In every year, 就是有这样的活动了，那么我们也希望在这个佛诞之前的来一下，我们先清清净我们的身口意啊，这样也代表一种三福一拜，也代表一种啊一种虔诚啊啊一种谦卑啦，一种的是啊这种放下的一个一个
Buddhist temples and Buddhist association, Buddhist organization, they used to organize various activities for the Buddhist people to practice. For example, they encourage people to observe precept, so especially eight precept. And then again, encourage people to listen to the Dhamma, Buddha's teaching. Then encourage people to practice meditation. Then in addition to that, during the day, at least they try to encourage people to be vegetarian. On this day, devout Buddhists and followers alike congregate at their various temples before dawn for the ceremony where the Buddhist flag will be hoisted and hymns sung in praise of the Holy Triple Gem, the Buddha, the Dharma, his teachings, and the Sangha, his disciples. Devotees often bring simple offerings of flowers, candles, and joss sticks to lay at the feet of their spiritual teacher. These symbolic offerings remind followers that life too is subject to decay and destruction when the offering burns out or wilts away. The best way to pay homage to the Buddha is twofold. One is offering lights, offering flowers, offering water, teas, offering incense, offering our body, in prostration and homage. That is a wonderful way of paying homage to the Buddha. But that is just on an outer level. When we do that, when we show respect to the Buddha, we are creating an energy that we can become a Buddha in the future. When we show respect to the Buddha's body, we wish to achieve the Buddha's body, free of sickness. When we offer light to the Buddha, we are offering light that dispels darkness. Therefore, may wisdom come to us just like the Buddha. When we offer incense to the Buddha, it smells good. Because it smells good, may we be able to keep morality. When we have morality, we smell good. When we offer food and fruits to the Buddha, we pray that all beings on this planet, other planets, other dimensions, may be free from hunger, suffering, poverty, and disease. So in Buddhism, when we pay homage to the Buddha, the best way is not so much me, 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 it's more about others. On an inner level, the supreme way to pay homage to the Buddha is to lessen all the qualities in you that bring grief, suffering, strife, difficulties to people around you. If we don't have a temple near us, and we can't get to a temple, we can have a personal shrine in our home. We have a beautiful image of Lord Buddha. We are not praying to the statue. We are not praying to the this image. We are using the image to remind us of the perfect Buddha. So therefore, we can have a beautiful shrine at home. We can offer flowers. We can offer some pure water and some incense, make prostrations sit in front of our altar, if we're older, on a chair, if we're younger, on the floor comfortably. And we can chant some sutras or some prayers according to our own beautiful traditions. Every country has their tradition. If you're Japanese, chant in Japanese. If you're Tibetan, chant in Tibetan. If you're Chinese, if you're English, chant in English. Whatever you like. And then meditate carefully. That's the outer celebration. The inner celebration is think carefully. This past year, before Wesa, what have I been doing has brought harm to others. What have people reminded me? Why do I do that? Think. I will pay homage to the Buddha by transforming that negative quality in my mind so I create less suffering. Then you make a promise to the Buddha. That's the best way to celebrate a something. Devout Buddhists understand how to lead a noble life according to the teaching by making a daily affirmation to observe the five precepts. Actually, we are uh, celebration with many kinds. For uh, the temple's uh, tradition, every morning we are chanting. So on the day, we are chanting so-so. 
And second, uh, we uh, went, we'll go to the market, we go to the school, and uh, we have uh, prepared uh, our little Buddha statues for everyone to, to bathing. We said the bathing Buddha. And then we also ignite that we can have two kinds or three kinds of celebrations. Some we have the like a music concert, uh, and then the, or we can go by the parade, our very beautiful flowers cart. Then so we go all the village and let people come out to have a look. Yeah, so many kinds of oh, sometimes we also prepare to go to the uh, uh, like a shopping center uh, to do a concert. Music concerts like Christians have a Christmas Day. We also have this kinds of celebration. Yeah. Day, the morning, the morning, the morning, the morning, 那么第二来讲就是这个玉佛了People take vows, they do prayers, they do meditations, they go on pilgrimage. Some of them go on pilgrimage to the holy places of the Buddha, like Bodh Gaya. Some people stay in meditation. Some people become a monk for a month. Some people go and visit their teachers. Some people go rescue animals. Some people go and do charity. Future actually, uh, now today we know a lot of computer. They are very uh, digital already. So maybe one day we can do it in the um, computer. You will, on the day we can celebration in uh, how to say congregation, uh, passing our message to our friends in this uh, uh, Vesak day. Because some of them not not uh, near, stay not near the temple. Maybe they don't have a temple to celebration. So how to do? They can celebration maybe in, in Facebook, uh, give others a good message, send a good message during the day, uh, praying in front of the, our, say, cam, uh, uh, our computer. There's a Buddha statue, uh, a picture, then we can, can pray also. I think Buddha is in our mind, in our heart, not only the outside uh, statues. Yeah. The Bathing the Buddha ceremony is also conducted during Wisa. Water is poured over the shoulders of the Buddha as a reminder to purify their own minds from greed, hatred and ignorance. Mesa 每个人都有一尊佛性所以每个人都是独一无二的啊，这个生死轮回的一个方法。We uh, have three enemies. One is desire, one is uh, angry, and one is uh, greedy. So how to stop? 
is to purify our mind. So when we are, are bathing Buddha, actually it's not bathing Buddha, no need us to bath. We bath the Buddha means that we also bath our mind. So through this action, we think it ourselves, reflex our own minds. We need to purify our mind, try our best, do our best for our country, our family, and our friends. Celebrating Wisak also means making special efforts to bring happiness to the unfortunate, like the aged, the handicapped, and the sick. Buddhists believe that performing good deeds on Wisak Day will multiply merit many times over. These acts of generosity observed by the Buddhist temples are also known as dana. This medical welfare stand Center started in 2009, run by the Malaysian Buddhist Association, Kalau Selangor Branch. Just, uh, it's, the purpose of this medical welfare center is to provide the public a professional Chinese medicine service. This is the fourth year, and we are providing a very full service of Chinese medicine with acupuncture, herbal medicine, and Chinese therapeutic massage, which is Twina. And currently, every day we have an average of 100 patients. And every year in Visat Day, we provide free service to the public. Devout Buddhists also vie with one another to provide refreshments and vegetarian food to devotees who visit the temple to pay homage to the Blessed One. Thank you. 我们真的要感恩我们的储物主因为我们当天是很多各方面的心中都会过来差不多整有三四千人的我们只是招待午餐 One week, the kitchen will be very busy preparing food for the dinner, morning breakfast dinner, afternoon lunch, and then plus tea time for drinks, and also workers, a lot of workers coming in to help in the preparation for Vesak Day, like the float, the decorations and everything. For Vesak Day, we distribute 10,000 packets for the public, plus the preceptors and the workers and all. Releasing or liberating animals has become a traditional practice during Wisak celebration. The Buddhist devotees release animals such as doves, sparrows and tortoises on Wisak Day as a symbolic gesture of releasing the soul and giving up the past sins. Besides that, this particular act is also seen as an act of liberation. Since Buddha was the Prince of Peace, was the exponent of love and great compassion, of course Buddha's compassion and love encompasses every single being and animals and insects because every single sentient being a sentient being, someone that's alive, something that's alive, can feel pain, can feel happiness, can feel love, can feel care, can feel pain. So what is the difference if I take a knife and cut my skin, cut my flesh, cut your flesh, you feel pain, and then if I cut the flesh of a bird? Maybe the bird cannot talk or scream like we can, but it still feels pain. So on Wesak Day, in celebration of Buddha's compassion, and simultaneously the wish to, for us to develop that compassion. We liberate animals to remember, to nothing from us to give to others without expecting thank you. So you can liberate birds, cows to be slaughtered, fishes, insects. You can liberate any animal you like and you can go further. If you don't want to liberate animals, you can go and make donations to Old folks home. 
orphanages, to people who are homeless, to people who are mentally challenged. We give clothes and toys to children. You can do all of that to celebrate. Because that day is not a day of getting, it is a day of giving. During the day, some Buddhist temples and associations with the help of volunteers carry out fun-filled activities for the family, such as drawing competitions for children, arts and craft fairs, concerts and many more. These encourage the devotees to spend time together in the temple grounds. During the evenings, many Buddhist groups will organize processions with decorated clothes carrying the image of the Buddha, and devotees will participate in candlelit processions. The procession will go on until the night, and this is how Wisak celebration is concluded. Today, we are very fortunate how Malaysian government has declared as a public holiday Wisak Day since 1962. And now, lately, we are really happy to say being a Malaysian, we celebrate the Vesak Day together with the other religious people. That's a beauty. So, since a few years ago, we the government has introduced open house. Now, even Vesak Day, we have the open house and then invite even our beloved prime ministers. So, being like one family, we now all the religions, time by Hari Raya, uh, Deepavali, uh, Christmas, Vesak Day, everybody get together, celebrate and remember the different the respective religion together as one family. So I'm personally, we are happy to believe in this country as a one family and we have all the freedom to practice our religion in this country. So as a Buddhist, on Vesak Day, we should make a commitment to learn up on Buddhism, to understand what the Buddha taught, to understand his life, to understand his teachings, and to apply it to your mind and to gain real changes in your mind, an attitude change, a transformation from within. So my message to Buddhists is be respectful of other religions, other people. Be respectful of their faith or their, their atheism. Everyone deserves happiness, compassion, and love, irregardless of what religion they are. And if we all abide by this kind of thinking, the world will be at peace. That's what Lord Buddha taught us. Happy with something. Yeah.